become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding hi everybody golden era bookworm here in light of the recent events regarding the murder of george floyd I'd like to bring light to racism that has existed in bodybuilding since its very beginnings. In this new series of videos, we will be exploring the political and racially driven decisions that have occurred since the birth of the AAU Mr. America contest, which in the 20th century held the highest honor for any bodybuilder who would be awarded the title. As Rick Wayne once stated in his book, Muscle Walls, the big winners were always white and they were always associated with the York Barbell Club and Bob Hoffman. In fact, for those of you that do not know, no African American ever won this award until the early 1970s, over 30 years after its initiation. In order to understand the racial prejudice in bodybuilding that occurred in the 20th century, we need to also look back into the history of America itself. Today we will focus on what is considered by many the first Mr. America competition, which was the first physique competition sanctioned by the AAU and took place in 1940. And we will look at Chick Deutsch, of which most of you are unaware of and have probably never heard of before. He was an African American bodybuilder that I believe was robbed of the Mr. America title in 1940. This video serves as much as a dedication as to honor the achievements and memory of Chick Deutsch, as well as to highlight the issues of racism in society and culture that have existed in the past and still exist today. The 1940 Mr. America competition was won by none other than John Grimmick, shown here with his title. According to Joe Rourke, a fellow Iron Game historian, up to 61 men competed, of which the final placings were as follows, with their accumulated points. John Grimmick, as I mentioned, won with 99 and a quarter points and also won Best Arms and Most Muscular Man awards. Frank Late came second with 97 and a half points, winning Best Chest. Lud Schusterich came third with 88 points, and Chick Deutsch came fourth with the Best Abdominals award. He was followed by John Gallagher. George Lapowski and Dave Asnes. Here is a quote from the report in Strength and Health magazine on the 1940 Mr. America competition. Quote, when the announcer, Mr. Al Frazen, called out the name John Grimmick next on the program, we could not hear what he had to say in the introduction. The applause was deafening, but we who know Grimmick did not have to hear about him. He was there, and there he was in all his glory. I have seen Grimmick poses in pictures, I have seen him perform at many, oh so many exhibitions, but this evening he was at his best. He looked to me like the reincarnation of Hercules with the grace of Apollo. When he struck his first pose, well, he did not strike it, he just glided into it, he looked supreme. He shifted into his second and third poses gracefully and knew what he was doing. He had his poses all selected. End quote. Now, when we look at the scoring system used in the Mr. America 1940 competition, five points were given for muscular development, five points for proportions, three points for posing, two points for general appearance. And although John Grimmick has always been described as being a real showman and a fantastic poser, it is his muscular development, proportions, and general appearance that begs the question, was he really superior to all other competitors that night? When we compare the other competitors to Chick Deutsch, who is shown here second to the left, actually right next to Dave Asnes, the obvious question to anyone with a set of eyes is, why on earth did the judges score Chick Deutsch so poorly? Let's look at some comparison photos of Chick versus those that placed higher than him. Here is a photo taken directly from the 1940 Mr. America competition, and this photo brings me exactly to my point. How on earth could Frank Late, who came second, or Lud Schusterich, who came third, I mean, or even with all due respect, John Grimmick, who came first, how could they possibly beat the conditioning of Chick Deutsch or his muscular development? 
or, or even Dave Asnes for that matter. When we look at the physiques alone, there is absolutely no comparison. This side-by-side -side comparison speaks a thousand words. The definition that Chick Deutsch brought to the 1940 Mr. America was unparalleled, yet not rewarded. Here we have yet another comparison photo clearly showing the conditioning that Chick Deutsch and Dave Asnes both possessed in comparison to those that placed higher in the 1940 Mr. America competition. You can clearly see the disappointment as well on both men's faces. Now I am not alone in my statements. Several prominent figures in the Iron Game throughout the years have either hinted or condemned the injustice that occurred in the inaugural 1940 Mr. America competition, including Sigmund Klein, who in a 1940 article details how several of the contestants, for example, used makeup and suntan products to cover their defects. Sig also states that most of the contestants did not know how to pose, whilst two of the best poses were in fact Chick Deutsch and John Grimmick. So anyone stating that Grimmick beat Deutsch because he was a better poser may not have such a strong case. Further, Sigmund Klein criticizes most contestants for having poor abdominal and leg separation, which is very obvious when we see the photos of Lud Schusterich versus Chick Deutsch. I mean, I mean there's just no comparison. Lud Schusterich is at best flabby and lacks any muscularity at all, or any muscular development in comparison to Chick Deutsch. And although Frank Late in some of these poses, for example, in this one, is, is heavily oiled, first of all, and is really trying to show off his, his muscular development, it is in no way near comparison to Chick Deutsch. So I really can't see how um, anyone could state that Chick Deutsch had lesser muscular development than Frank Late, at least, or Lud Schusterich. As I mentioned, Sigmund criticizes most contestants for having poor abdominal leg separation. I think I've made that case pretty strong, especially with Lud Schusterich and Frank Late. But when we look at Chick Deutsch, although his legs are comparable to Grimmick's, his abdominals are razor sharp in comparison. And I mean, it's just night and day, isn't it? As Sig puts it then, Seldom have I seen such fine, clear-cut, straight abdominals and external obliques as this young, favorite, and popular athlete possesses. Dan Lurie is another authoritative figure who heavily criticized the decision of the judges. He also was of the opinion that Chick Deutsch was robbed. Andy Bostinto, who knew John Grimmick, recalls the 1940 Mr. America and states, I am one of the few bodybuilders in today's era who remember the name Chick Deutsch. He competed against the famous John Grimmick at Madison Square Garden, New York in the 1940 AAU Mr. America contest. Chick was a walking Greek god. When Chick appeared on stage next to John, it was obvious that Chick would win the battle. Chick's upper body overwhelmed the audience, displaying his balance, defined muscular sculptured godlike physique. John lacked, by comparison, the qualities displayed by Chick Deutsch. I feel he was cheated in being crowned the title of Mr. America. He is truly the uncrowned winner of the Mr. America title. Those words should definitely resonate as to what happened that night. Here we have further comparisons now of Chick Deutsch with second place winner Frank Late and third place winner Lud Schusterich. Again, there is no comparison. Chick's physique was superior in muscular development and definition during the 1940s, and on the night of the 1940 Mr. America competition. There is no doubt that the strong racism and segregation that existed during the late 1930s and 1940s influenced the judge's decision on the night. All one has to do is reflect on the time and see the images left behind of those times. It is clear that the image of white people who were portrayed on all sorts of media and advertising, represented the face of America. In fact, I invite you to get online as I did on Google, and Google 1930s or 1940s ads, and you will see what I mean. Here is a screenshot of the results of images for such a search. As they say, a picture paints a thousand words. And the pictures from the 1930s and 1940s definitely paint an ugly word and that is racism. 
I find it rather hypocritical because whilst the world had just ended one world war and was about to brace itself for a second one, which was heavily influenced by hatred and racism against the Jewish people, here we have America painting a similar racist picture at home, with African Americans being oppressed instead. Just have a look at these images now. I also found these images when I typed 1930s and 1940s ads, and the only depictions I could see of African Americans was of course as happy, loyal servants to their oppressing white masters. Knowing the racial prejudices that existed during the late 1930s and early 1940s, it is easy to understand why the powers that be would rather have John Grimmick as the ideal representation and symbol of American manhood and as their Mr. America, instead of Chick Deutsch. This example alone serves to show just how damaging racism is, as it influences every corner of our culture and society, and to simply not acknowledge that racism persists today is to turn a blind eye to a very real problem. This racism and prejudice in the Iron Game would persist, of course, through the 1950s, 60s and 70s, which I will continue to explore in future videos. If you have found this video informative, as sensitive as the issue of racism is, please like and share to raise awareness, and subscribe for more content like this. If you would like to support my research into the history of bodybuilding, please donate via PayPal, become a patron, or visit my website, Fatter Print Books and Courses on Old School Bodybuilding, and please email me if you wish to collaborate or pass on your bodybuilding relics. That's it from me, this is the Golden Era Bookworm saying, bye for now, and stay strong. To take full advantage of my collaboration with Old School Labs, please visit their website and choose from their marvellous range of supplements using my code BOOKWORM12. And for an entertaining look at the history of bodybuilding's supplement industry, I would highly recommend watching Subs the Movie, which I have collaborated in, available at Amazon Prime and Vimeo.